Good morning. I want to thank the Health Quality Council for allowing me to share Dad's story. This is John, my dad, and we celebrated his 92nd birthday last February, which was a birthday I did not think would happen. As background, Dad had lived independently up until he was 89, and when, we had, uh, when he had a severe infection that nearly took his life. Dad was given antibiotics and to clear, infect, to clear the infection, but during this time, he was greatly fatigued and weak and could not be left alone. His lady friend of 23 years, Dorothy, moved into his two-bedroom condo to assist over a two-week period until the infection cleared. Dad got used to having not only the constant companionship, but also having someone around to cook and assist with managing the home. He asked whether Dorothy would stay with him, and up until about a month ago, Dorothy had provided companionship, care, and support to my dad until the caregiving started to impact her health. And I will say, sort of on that note, her moving in, I think there was a shift in his mobility because now he allowed her to help in a lot of ways, but I will say that I think he lost a lot of his mobility because of that care. Um, so it's just some food for thought around, you know, keeping our, our loved ones active because when we transfer that to, uh, to someone else, I believe that can be also a detriment. So just something to think about. In the fall of uh, 2016, we were introduced to Seniors First. Dad's health concerns were changing as he was having difficulty sleeping and was experiencing confusion at night, had significant phlegm buildup which caused him to cough and choke and became extremely fatigued and weak which resulted in multiple falls. The changes to his health and especially the confusion at night had us worried that perhaps he was showing signs of dementia. I first, first reached out to Melody Neufeld, the client care coordinator for CPAS, and she was instrumental in making the referral to the Seniors First team. I was so impressed with the coordinated effort of the whole Seniors First team in addressing Dad's health concerns, providing the support required so that Dad could continue to reside in his condo. A key player for Seniors First was Dr. Trish, or at least that's what we called her. I don't, I, her last name was really tough to pronounce, so we, she just said, just call me Dr. Trish. A doctor making house calls, wow. This was something new to us, but we were so thankful for her care and attention. After a review, review of Dad's medications, she said that the confusion was likely due to a side effect from one of his pills, and worked collaboratively with Dad's physician to remove this pill. We saw an almost immediate change to Dad's nights, and the confusion became less and less. I was particularly impressed with the coordinated effort and communication between Dad's physician and Dr. Trish, as they were not in competition as experts, but recognized that each played a role in supporting Dad to better health. Dad made his intentions clear that his desire was to stay in his home. So over the next few months, we had the support of Tanya, client care coordinator, rallying the troops. Physio and occupational therapy assisted with assessing his mobility, use of a walker, and the aids required to support bathing, toileting, and getting in and out of bed and his favorite chair in the living room. Requisitions for bathing chair and initially two SAS poles were put in place immediately. As a family, we followed PT and OT's direction and put comfort height toilets in and grab bars wherever possible. These supports were well-intentioned, but Dad's continued, decline, continued to decline having multiple falls that resulted in multiple trips to the ER. It took a few trips to identify that the falls were a result of extremely low hemoglobin. Once this was identified, Dad was transfused with two units of blood after 18 hours in the ER. I wonder if we can change that. Oh, it's here. Okay. <laughs> this one, just go forward. Oh, I did something wrong. I haven't used one of these in a while. Just want to show the ER picture. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> He's going to kill me for this. Um, but, you know, this picture was taken. I, I share a lot of my pictures with my family when we're in the ER. And, I mean, literally, um, this was probably one of those times when the ER doctor, just prior, I said, Dad, let's, uh, let's do the um, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. So uh, this is his Jack Nicholson impression. <laughs> but he, 
um, just prior, we just found out after this, he was ready to go home. We thought everything was good. The ER doctor comes in and he says, John, your hemoglobin 71. So we were in the hospital for another five hours to uh, transfuse two units of blood. So we try to keep a sense of humor in ER because it's tough on these folks. And uh, anyway, I, I, I'm never going to show him that picture, but I did share it with my siblings. Uh, now I'm lost. Where did I go? The ER, as I said, is no place for seniors, as 15 minutes is like an hour to them. And just like young children, their moods change and they become extremely frustrated with the waiting between blood testing, taking vitals, and updates from ER doctors. Dad was required to go for blood work every couple of weeks, and if his hemoglobin got low again, he would have to be transfused. This process was initially cumbersome as we could not get an appointment for Dad in the clinical treatment center, so we were forced to return to ER multiple times. The hours spent in ER were from a minimum of 8 to 18 hours, and this time took an incredible toll on not only Dad, but on me as a caregiver, as I could not leave his side. We were fortunate to be able to coordinate biweekly transfusions in the clinical treatment center, and even though this was usually an eight-hour day, we were in the right place to receive the care appropriate for the treatment required. And then, so go forward the next one. There we go. So again, I'm updating my family because they want to know how's dad doing and his lady friend wants to know. So I said, dad, give him a thumbs up. Really fortunate. This team in the clinical treatment center, they're fabulous. Um, they, they do everything they can to make him comfortable with the warm blankets. Um, toileting is a huge issue with when you're transfusing. And so that again is something that um, really needs a lot of care and attention. I'm happy to report that through further investigation and tweaking of dad's meds and the inclusion of an iron supplement, his hemoglobin has stabilized and it is very likely that transfusion may not be required anymore. The seniors first team continues to follow up with peri care morning and night as well as nursing care when bed sores appear or when there is a spike in blood pressure. They provide ongoing monitoring in the home. These visits aren't just about addressing dad's health issues, but relationships have been formed and Dad welcomes each team member into his home to catch up and have a laugh. Without the ongoing support of the seniors first team, I do not believe Dad would have the quality of life he so desires and the ability to stay in his own home. Given the strain on Dorothy and me as primary caregivers, we have put in place 12 hour night care to allow us time to rejuvenate. Without overnight care and the support of Seniors First providing respite, we would be completely exhausted. We continue to evaluate options to transition Dad to personal care, but I am not convinced that we have found a suitable option. We have toured numerous independent living and personal care options that I call the cruise ship model, as they offer spiritual, health, wellness, social, and, di the din and dining experience all under one roof, with numerous living arrangements from studio to two bedrooms, but the size of these places I fear will be overwhelming and I do not support and do not support those with limited mobility to access the dining room and activities without additional supports in place. The smaller personal care home options have small rooms with shared washrooms, but the caregiver to resident ratio is better, but dad thought it was like living in a dormitory. As a suggestion for the future, I would like to see living arrangements where seniors with mobility issues, memory loss, or who are easily confused have access to all amenities within a smaller area, but still have the privacy to entertain guests in their suite, and that dollars go towards a higher care to resident ratio versus grand scale hotel-like lobbies with chandeliers and extravagant decor. As it stands right now, even the cost of overnight care Paying $15 an hour will drain dad's savings very quickly at over $5,000 a month, which does not include food, cost of condo fees, insurance, etc. For seniors that wish to stay in their home as long as possible is a luxury afforded by few unless they rely completely on family for care. How do we make it affordable and respect the wishes of so many seniors that want to live and die in the comfort of their home? For now, we were taking it day by day. 
and have been fortunate to find amazing caregivers to give us time to think and review all options. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity to praise the services of Seniors First, but also provide some food for thought.